Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Hoka Rocket X2. So the Rocket X2 is a very exciting shoe. It's Hocker's first real deal super shoe in my opinion. We've had the Carbon X line and the original Rocket X, but they were probably more in the trainer racer category. They didn't really have the foams that matched up to the best super shoes on the market and they were coming in a bit cheaper, but this is a full on super shoe with a big stack of Piba foam in the midsole and a price to match the best super shoes on the market. It's 220 pounds in the UK and 250 dollars in the US. It's a nice lightweight shoe weighing 225 grams or 7.9 ounces in my UK size nine. And it's got a five millimeter drop with a stack height of 36 millimeters at the heel and 31 millimeters at the forefoot. So Hoka's opted against going right up to the 40 millimeter limit set by World Athletics, but it is a six millimeter jump on the stack height of the original Rocket X. Got a lightweight synthetic mesh upper with some internal structure added especially around the midfoot there's not a lot of support at the heel there but you have got a little bit of cushioning and little thin lines there that uh, cradle the back of the foot a little bit on the run then you've got a piba midsole so hoka says this foam has got better rebound than the uh, eva foams used in the carbon x and rocket x and really this is what we've been asking for from hoka for a while is a you know a better midsole foam that delivers a bit more of the bouncy soft feeling you get from the best foams on the market and that's what we've got here in the rocket x2 it's a dual dense midsole with a slightly softer layer of foam on the top but to the touch uh, not that different in terms of the firmness you've got there but in theory the bottom layer is slightly firmer than the top one and you've got a full length a scooped carbon plate running between those layers of foam on the outsole you've got basically rubber coverage and all the key impact areas you'd expect two strips at the back good forefoot coverage and then a nice big cutout to reduce the weight of the shoe in the middle there so it's just gonna be me in this review had a little bit of trouble getting hold of these samples and mike who has got them has been injured lately so hasn't been able to test them but we will come back with more thoughts down the line through comparisons to other shoes and race tests where hopefully we can give you a multi-tester perspective <music> So the fit of the Hoka Rocket X2 has been a little bit tricky for me. Like the length is good, I'd say. Like I like the fit in my in the toe box for me. It's got a reasonably tight racing shoe fit without being too cramped. Like even on longer runs, like sometimes I could feel like it was maybe slightly cramped on my right foot, but in general it was fine. A good length. I have quite a narrow foot though. Do bear that in mind. Some people might find it even more cramped than me. Problem I had though mainly was at the heel where I did have heel rub on my left foot uh, over extended runs. It's probably not to do with this little slightly annoying flap that you can have up or down. It's it's more almost the way that it bows in, I think, uh, the uh, heel on the shoe, and I did get a little bit of rubbing from this section. Now, it wasn't that bad, like, I my I used it again today, having had it rubbed yesterday, and I had yeah, a I'll put a plaster on, some bandage on, and heel lock the shoe, and it was okay today on a long run. But something to be aware of, I think the heel is a little bit loose, and it's quite uh, tight in the toe box, but in a good way for me in my normal size. So the first couple of runs I did in the Hoka Rocket X2 were both quite short sessions. I did one on the road with just one extended block of faster running and then took it down to the track for eight 400 meter reps with at a fairly controlled pace but with a fairly short recovery, just a 100 meter jog recovery. So it ended up being a pretty good block of running at good paces and I did like it a lot. Like it's really soft when you first put it on and walk around in it or even run slow in it. Certainly for warm ups it's noticeable what a soft shoe this is. Especially if you're a heel striker like me, the section at the back is very soft and you sink in a little bit and actually worried it was going to be too soft because there's already quite a low drop shoe and with that very soft heel it makes it feel even lower drop if that makes sense and I was wondering if I was going to get enough tip forward and punch from it but actually when you do start running fast the foam feels a lot firmer underfoot like in a good way actually um, I ran in it side by side with the Rocket, uh, Rocket original Rocket X and running slow it's bizarre night and day completely different feeling shoes this is so much softer uh, and then when you run faster like this is still softer and bouncier and you know, more impressive but uh, it does feel a little bit closer in feel to the original rocket x although that is still a bit more firm when you do speed up you get a really nice transition from the shoe it does push you forward very quickly indeed it's not actually as bouncy as i thought it was going to be again from those early impressions of the shoe it felt very soft very like squishy it's going to really be powerfully bouncy and it isn't actually like that for me it felt a you know, there's a little bit of bounce there for sure and it feels a bit propulsive but it's not as powerfully punchy as some of the shoes with you know, really high stacks things like uh, the alpha fly or the wave rebellion pro those do feel a bit more propulsive than the rocket x2 but this feels a little bit lighter and nimbler certainly a very snappy uh, transition to it after those first two sessions running you know controlled fast reps I wanted, I wanted to go all out in it so i took it down to a park run near me for a, a longer session good morning and welcome to pims park in north london uh, we're here to do 
nice fast test of the Hoka Rocket X2. Uh, I'm going to do the park run today. Uh, there's a park run at nine o'clock, but before that, I'm going to go out and do 5k uh, around 3:45 a k. Get the legs moving at a faster pace. Probably around marathon effort right now for myself, and then try on the park run a bit faster and see how the shoes go. It's very cold. Luckily, there's no ice on the course, so it should be hopefully quite fast. So first 5k done, and that was that was good. I'm actually slightly concerned the GPS was kind to me because I was ticking along kind of mid 330s there, and I thought I'd be more like 340. But um, you know, hard to judge pace right now. It's cold. My feet are numb, so that makes it difficult to judge pace. Park runs about to start. I aim to try and go sub 17 and just see how it goes. I have a slightly iffy record at this park run of not quite hitting what I want to. But, but today, really, the aim is just to put a hard run into the Hokers, see how they feel uh, when I'm really flagging in those final 2k. Be interesting. Um, so all wrapped up now, I did the park run in 1640, so quite pleased. I thought it was probably going to be a bit more of a struggle today after a few weeks of building back up slowly. Like when I did uh, that, I did, if, if you've been watching the channel, I did like a 1559 in the Mizunos at Battersea Park a few weeks back. After that, I had a little bit of a setback with the knee and then have built back up. So that was first kind of time really going all out since then and that was quite a good run so pleased with that shoe felt um really good for the first few bits and i think uh as i rocked back a bit towards the end like with the lower drop and the very soft heel it has as a heel striker and i'm starting to flag a bit there I'm not sure i was getting quite the propulsion and tip forward i get with some other shoes but then in the last game i managed to pick it up again and it was fine so i think that would be slightly concern for myself as uh, someone who you know with the low drop shoe there i think it works best for me when i'm cruising in control running like marathon pace holding on well and then i maybe get a little bit more tip forward from a higher drop shoe towards the end and you know, the drop of a shoe isn't always the be all and end all but with a very soft foam at the heel like you have here it does feel like it is the low drop and maybe even lower than uh, the actual drop itself and the other concern i have with it, it really is um heel rub my left my left heel is uh, rubbing i had it on a couple of shorter runs i've done in the shoe and today at the end of the park run i stopped started walking again i could feel very very clearly some pretty nasty heel rub on the shoe there so i've heel locked it for a bit of a cool down it seems a bit better but that is going to be a concern i think that heel design's a little bit odd the way it folds over or doesn't fold over I've tried both ways and both ways it seems to rub a little bit but yeah that was enjoyable run in the hoka for sure probably enjoyed it more pushing along in that first 5k that ended up not far off marathon pace that felt really good to me very cruisy and control in the shoe and then when starting to lose a bit towards the end of the 5k there i'm not sure I've got quite as much propulsion uh, with my style of running as people who are probably a bit more bounding might get from it so after the park run session i was really liking the rocket x2 I certainly felt it was a really fast shoe it just had some concerns about whether it was going to tip me forward as much as other shoes and obviously that heel rub was a bit of a concern but i want to use it for a longer run today so like i say bandaged up my heel and took it out again and it was okay on the heel rub front with a tight heel lock and some bandages on and i did a 10 mile run with 10k steady in the middle so about marathon effort because uh, the pace was a bit up and down with the wind and things like that but the effort throughout was probably around marathon effort and it, it did feel really good it felt very cruisy really did feel like I was rolling through quite nicely with even though with my shuffly heel striking style I think it might be a shoe that suits people who land very powerfully a bit more boundy on the midfoot and thus get a bit more propulsion from the shoe but a concern I have on that front is that by the end of the run like toward the last couple of k I did feel like the Rocket X2 was bottoming out a little bit more than other carbon shoes and I don't know if it's just the slightly lower stack or the foam or where I was running in it but don't think I was getting quite as much uh, propulsion towards the end of that run as I would do from a higher stack shoe, a bouncier shoe, things like the Alpha Fly, where you have the trade off in weight to get a bit more foam packed into the midsole. So that'll be maybe a concern for the marathon. So I'd have a couple of concerns on the front for the marathon, aside from the heel rub, assuming that wasn't the problem. One would be if I did start to rock back more and more on my heels and get tired later on, if it just is a bit soft and a warrior, a warrior wouldn't be getting as fast and tippy forward a transition as you get from a shoe like the Vaporfly, for example. And the other concern would be that with the slightly lower stack of foam there, is it going to protect legs as well or bottom out slightly in those final 10k? I wouldn't be so sure. Like something like the Asics Metaspeed Sky, I think it's got lots of similarities to the shoe, but the foam feels like it retains its bounce and propulsion deeper into runs really well. Whereas my concern, this foam might even be too soft and it might just compress a bit and lose a little bit of its spark by the end of a long run, which it did a little bit today, but it wasn't a massive concern. Like it was still feeling very good at the end of that run. It's just compared to other carbon shoes, we're trying to look at the fine margins here. That was something I did notice. All in all, it was a very positive run experience with the Rocket X2 though. It is certainly, you know, a very exciting shoe that has that super shoe feeling underfoot, the first such shoe from Hoka. And it, but at the same time, it has a reasonably natural ride for a super shoe. The stack is a little bit lower 
lower, the drop is lower, and feels actually the let the the height it's listed as, or even lower than that. Because sometimes these shoes that are listed with low drop super shoes have big rockers, firmer heels, and actually still feels like quite a high drop shoe to me. Whereas this feels like a low drop shoe. So if you're looking for that, here's another great option, and it does have a nice amount of bounce and propulsion, and it, you certainly can run very quick in it. So the Hoka Rocket X2 is a very good carbon shoe. It's certainly Hoka's best effort yet, and it, you know, it can rival the best shoes out there, I'd say. I thought it's also got a really good vibe to it. I love this colorway. I like the look of it. It feels quite natural on the foot while still giving you some of those super shoe elements. It's, it's got a lot going for it all round. The price is you know, as high as other shoes. It's not coming in cheaper. That would be great, but uh, you know, it's not, not overpriced for the carbon shoe market either. I'm not sure, for me, if it ranks right up with the very best options, uh, just for a couple of little concerns I have with it over time. And part of that is that the low drop and the softer heel probably doesn't suit me as well as some other shoes out there. As a shuffling, heel striking runner, I probably want a little bit of a firmer heel ride myself to get a bit more tip forward, whereas those who are more bounding, more midfoot, should get, I think, an even better experience out of the shoe. Like, I've still enjoyed using the shoe a lot, but I think there are others who might get a bit more from it with a different style. It'll be interesting to see when Tom gets it, for example, how he feels about it because he's got a bit more of a loping midfoot style. However, you run in it though, I think it does lack a little bit of the propulsion you get from higher stack shoes or the very best super shoes. Things that come to mind are certainly the Alpha Fly 2, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, the Essex Meta Speed Sky Plus, Adios Pro 2, even. They've really gone for big booming midsoles and I think that does result in more propulsion from the foam and I think that carries deeper into runs a bit better than with the Rocket X2, which I think does lose a little bit of its bounce over time. Maybe it's just the lower stack. Maybe it's that the foam is so soft it does compress a bit. But yeah, I think you're getting a little bit more rebound from those other foams. And I think for me, I think the low drop probably means in later in races, I prefer the more aggressive feeling of something like the Vaporfly or even actually the New Balance SC Elite V3. Now, that is a super shoe that has a lower drop uh, on spec than the uh, Rocket X2. But because it's got a firmer uh, feeling at the heel, because the plate's a little bit higher there, they've got slightly firmer foam in general and a really pronounced rocker that, that feels like an eight ten millimeter drop shoe to me the sc elite v3 does and i, I really liked using that for fast runs it suits me very well this i think because it is so soft at the heel doesn't have quite as aggressive a rocker design i think does feel like a low drop shoe and i think that's a really nice thing to have on the market because there aren't that many actually low drop super shoes that feel like low drop super shoes the med speed sky plus is one i do think that's got a bit more propulsion i think that might be the thing that really probably makes it difficult to recommend the rocket x2 for me because i think they're quite similar shoes but i think the metaspeed sky plus gives you more rebound uh, and i think it will work better in longer races in particular the similar weights this is a, as a softer foam in the midsole but when you're running fast the difference isn't that dramatic i think between them i just think you get a bit more punch from the msb sky plus so i think if you're looking for the lower drop super shoe, i think that'll be the one i'd go for of them but this feels even lower drop than that so maybe for somebody who really wants almost a zero drop shoe then this is a nice option because it is a very good super shoe with a low drop that feels like a low drop one thing we can definitely say for sure is that this is hoka's best uh, carbon shoe uh, for any distance i think really like i mean you might get a bit more more out of the uh, X3 if you are looking at road ultra marathons where you want a bit more stability because this isn't a very stable shoe as you'd expect from you know soft super shoe like this but it's so much more propulsive and impressive for running fast than the other shoes out there like I like the Rocket X I thought it was a really solid trainer racer shoe that had a pretty stable ride a nice firm ride you weren't really getting the plate from it but the rocker and the foam worked quite well to create a fast ride and it was a lightweight shoe but this is a level up in terms of performance I think and the very clear pick in Hoka's range so far I think there's some rumors that they're going to do a short short distance carbon shoe as well which I find interesting because I, th I think this is probably at its best on short distances but that'll be interesting to see because that should hopefully have a lot of elements from this shoe but in a really lightweight design and that'll be quite an interesting option so yeah like I say I really like the vibe of the Rocket X2 I think it's a great option for shorter races I think and you will get a slightly more natural feel the lower drop helps a bit with stability as well I think it's a really good one for tearing up a 10k it's certainly great for half marathon and marathon as well I think it'd be a really good option for lots of people I personally would go for a more propulsive slightly higher stack shoe with maybe a slightly firmer foam that you know, maintains its uh, its rebound throughout runs a bit better than I found with the Rocket X2. And like I always say, these are really fine margins when it comes to common shoes. It's a really good shoe. You can run very fast in it and really love using it. I just think personally, you're going to get slightly more from uh, slightly more propulsive shoes for the marathon. And then it might come down more a question of taste and whether you want the lower drop of this shoe, the softer feel, or a slightly firmer, higher drop shoe, which I find tips me forward a little bit better late into races. But others will disagree on that. That'll be down to personal preference. So that is our review of the Hoka Rocket X2. Uh, please do let us know what you think in the comments below. You're excited for the shoes? One you're going to dash out and buy? Um, please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we will see you next time on the channel.